Sometimes in Google Sheets, you want visualizations, but you don't want full on charts. You don't want huge floating objects. You just want something that can fit inside cells that you can drag down for that whole column. So something like the line chart that we've got here or the column chart, or sometimes like a progress bar that you can compare across each other, things like that. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this in Google Sheets. So my name is David and I'm gonna have tons of videos on Google Sheets, Excel, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So check out my other videos if you like what you see. So let's get started. So here I'm in Google Sheets and there is this function called equals sparkline. And equals sparkline has two inputs, the data and then options next to it. Note that if you don't see this, you'll get this question mark and just click on this. I always recommend going to this view or clicking this to see more. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see how the options work and I'm gonna click learn more to have this on the side. But for now, I'm gonna keep it in this view. So in the base case of sparklines, you just need the data. The square brackets around options, which means that you don't have to do it, it's not mandatory. So the data I'm gonna do is over here. I'm going to close my brackets and press enter and get this line chart. And because it's in a cell, I can do this. Now this is, as I said, it's different to if you want a full on chart that you can select data and go to insert chart. And then you get your options that will build this chart kind of like that. And you can change the layout or other aspects as well, or make it a line chart if you want to. But this is a floating object. It's not what we're going to want in this case. So um, you can actually do a bit more. So you have your options and some of the settings you might expect are how to change the color. So if you go to options, you need to start with opening a curly bracket and then you need to say what is the criteria that you need. So the options here do vary depending which chart type you use. We'll get to that in a second. But for line charts, it's like this and we're going to change the color. Color notice spelt without a U. It's the incorrect spelling, if you ask me. <laughs> so color like that, and then a comma to say what the color is. So the color we're going to say is going to be blue, close our brackets, curly brackets, and then close our regular brackets, and speech marks before and after text all the time. There we go. You can also have things for like uh, the minimum, the maximum. A lot of these are pretty sophisticated. You don't need to know them but we're going to look at some other charts. So column chart, honestly, this is one I very rarely use because you don't, you have to go here and then back to your data. I like the line chart just for trends when it's connected, when it's data over time, but I'll show you how to do the column one anyway. So you can do equals sparkline, and then you have the data like this. And then you can press a comma and you can say, open curly brackets, speech marks, chart type, and then you can press a comma, and we're going to say that the chart type is going to be column, like that. And then we're going to close our curly brackets, close our regular brackets, and we get the column chart. You wanna change the color, you want to add a second option. You need to go, before you close the curly brackets, you need to do a semicolon. So semicolon indicates that you're moving from one pair of options to another one. So here we have chart type and then, well, what is the chart type that we want? Next we want color and what is the color that we want? So let's do, for example, uh, purple like that. And then close your curly brackets, close your regular brackets and you get a purple column chart. Doesn't work if you double click like it does in other aspects of Google Sheets. By the way, if you're using Excel, then Sparkline isn't a function. It's something you can do from one of the menus but in Google Sheets it's different and it's way more flexible. Although the code makes it a little bit trickier to do some of the more uh, advanced ones. So the total, we're gonna do equals sum and first get the total. And then I'm going to drag that down. I don't want the total sales down here, I just want that one. And I'm gonna do a bar chart. And here I'm going to say equals spark line. And then the data is going to be this one and then comma, we're going to do like before, chart type, comma, but in this case, we're gonna do a bar. And just to let you know what that looks like when you have multiple cells, it's gonna look like this. So it's kind of alternating between colors. It's chosen orange and blue for kind of colorblind awareness. 
and it's saying the widest one is 730, which is the third one. I find this very confusing. I wouldn't really recommend using this one, but just to show you if this was 200, then it's the lowest one and it would change like that. So um, instead, I like these to be just on one cell. So instead of this one, I'm just gonna do it on this cell, which is the total. Uh, and it's just gonna show me a full bar. So it's not very useful, and if I drag that down, they're all gonna be full bars because it's doing the total out of the total. However, what we can do in one of the options, if I scroll down, is for bar chart, I have the max, and that's what we're gonna do. So semicolon to move to the next input pairs, and I'm going to say max, and comma to say what the max is. And I'm going to just type in the highest number in this range, which is 2793, like that. And then I'm going to press enter. You don't need speech marks when you have a number, only when you have text. So there you go. So now it's showing me as a result of this one. However, it's not dynamic. So if this one were to change to something bigger, for example, like uh, 800, then this now becomes the biggest one, but these two are still showing kind of max. So that's not really right. What I wanna do is instead of this, I'm going to put in a function, a Google Sheets function is max, and max will give you the highest number out of a range. Press F4 to get these dollar signs, so when we drag it down, it keeps these cells, it doesn't drag down the cell references. So if I close my brackets there, oh, it's given me an error. And yeah, I need to close my max bracket there and then remove it there. By the way, I know it gets confusing when you do your speech marks, when you do your curly brackets, your regular brackets, when you do your colons, semicolons, and your commas. But if you follow the instructions of this video, and then you can also download this file there will be a link in the description to this video for how to get this file and follow along. So if I drag this down, now it is dynamic. So if I change this one to 900, then suddenly that one becomes there. But if I were to, let's amend the highest value uh, from this one, let's do 900 here. Now this is the highest value and all of the others have changed subsequently. So progress bar, here we've got progress for each of our departments. So Basically the same thing. I can actually even just take this one and copy it. And then I can click here and paste, control V. And I can say instead of H14, I can click on this cell. Bit finicky when you change references here uh, in Google Sheets, but if you delete it and then select that, then it works. So if you press F4 to lock that in again, will give me a progress bar of all of these. This is compared to the max, but if I wanna do it compared to 100%, all I have to do is put in a number one like this, and now it's 70% out of 100%. So there you go, this is how you can do a progress bar, and you can change the color in the same way using color one. Win loss, so here we have, this is useful for sports teams where you just wanna know um, regardless of the number is a positive or a negative, and it gives you this up versus down or blanks if it's a zero. So to do that equals sparkline, and then data is going to be all of this row for these nine matches that this team has played. And then in options, curly brackets, start with chart type. If you don't do any chart type, then it defaults to line, which is the one that I would use the most. And then, but here I would do win loss. And then semicolon, I get confused about that stuff as well. And then I'm going to say, here we're going to look at the colors. So for column and win loss spark lines, you need color and you need neg color. So if I just do it like that, you're going to see it just showing black everywhere, not that useful. So I'm going to do semicolon, color, again, no you, comma, and then I'm going to do green, and that's going to be positive, and neg color is going to be red. There we go. And now if I was to drag this down, it works pretty well and gives me the results, same as here. 
So uh, let's go to Google Finance. So over here, I'm going to show you how to do uh, all of a stock price or all of a currency price inside one spark line. So here is an example of what we will be able to do. So here is US dollar versus all of these currencies, the last seven day trend, the 30 day trend and the 365 day trend. So it's pretty cool. This Google Finance function gets you a lot of flexibility. And I have another video where I cover that that I'll link to in the description below. But let's do the building blocks first. So equals Google Finance, press tab, the ticker. I'm going to do AAPL, which is the ticket name for Apple. If I just do that one and close my brackets, I get the current stock price of Apple. But I can go a little bit further. I can say equals Google Finance, and then I can do Apple, and then I want to get the price. So that's the attribute. Like with Sparklines, you can also learn what these are by going to learn more. And that's how I know the attribute needs to be this exact wording that says price. But you can get other aspects like the the high, the low, the open, the close, things like that, trading volumes. So start date, I'm going to say today minus 30. This is a function in Google Sheets and Excel which returns today's date. So today minus 30 is 30 days before the date. And here you can see it's 30 days, so you know exactly when I recorded this video. <laughs> but you can also go a little bit further. So you can say actually end date today and now it will return this really cool array of all of the close prices for the last 30 days, which is pretty awesome. I note that it started on the 3rd of October. This is US style dates, and it hasn't got the 2nd of November yet, so it kind of stopped there for now, but uh, it will update over time. So let's say I want to wrap this all inside a spark line. Well, that's pretty easy to do. Once you have your data like this, you can just write equals spark line around it, and then close your brackets like that, and it will do all of that in a line chart, which is pretty cool. You can even go 3000 if you like, and then it'll fetch all that data, <laughs> and it'll show you how this has evolved. So here it is kind of how I did these ones. I have a bit more sophistication that links to cells of the, uh, the currency rates, and it has currency to start with that. Um, but this is essentially how we can do all of this. But yeah, if you want a copy of this workbook, which has that, then check out the description in for a link. All right. Well, that's the end of this video on Sparklines. I hope you found it useful. My name is David Manheim, and I have tons of videos on Google Sheets, Excel, Power BI, Zoom, Teams, PowerPoint. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So check out my other videos if this is something that you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.